<laughs> to find out, to find out who our next guest is, Fred Cook. Tommy, our next surprise guest is Emily Power Smith. <laughs> Me too. Emily Power Smith. <laughs> Whatever it is you do. <laughs> how how would I know you? How, how or? Well, you mightn't know me. I'm not very very famous or anything. Okay. I, so you, I'll tell you what I do. Please do. Okay, I'm a clinical sexologist. I'm the only one in Ireland. <laughs> so I work. I, yeah. So what 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 do you do? <laughs> Do you mean professionally? So, so we're all sexologists, like you know. <laughs> yeah. What? What? Yeah. What do you? What do you do? What do you work at? I don't like. So, so sexology is the scientific study of sexuality, and I run a private practice in Dunleary, working with couples and individuals um, who have all sorts of issues or questions around all kinds of sexuality. Um, and I train other professionals on how to be sex positive, which is something that's relatively new in Ireland as a concept. Um, and I teach and I write and I do this kind of stuff. Any yeah. chance I get to get people talking about sex in a mature and educated way. Good luck with that! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I suppose it's, it's good in a way because what it does, any talk about sex produces tension. Yes, I'm so, feeling it right now. So, uh, <laughs> so, the, so the release of that tension, that's why people laugh when you talk about sex. Is cause it, so, uh, but maybe if you removed all the tension from sex, it would just be like shopping and there'd be no cracking it at all. So, <laughs> so some tension is, is good. A lot of people love shopping. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> On their own or with other people, of course. There you yeah. Go. Uh, what kind of, uh, <laughs> what is sex positivity? Yeah, so sex positivity is, so I'm sex positive. So the only thing I worry about is um, if somebody is enjoying sex, they're fully consenting they're, and they're safe. Um, I'm not worried about your age, your weight, your orientation, your gender. I'm not worried about what you get up to as long as everybody is fully consenting, safe and having a really good time. So I take the moral judgment out of it. I take the, a lot of the judgment that a lot of us would have grown up with. I take that out of it. Mm -hmm. And unless it's a problem for the person I'm talking to, it's not a problem for me. As long as they're, you know, those within that, that framework. Yeah. Well, so that's sex positive. Can you give me an example of the, of the, the, the type of problems that Irish people are coming to you with? Yeah, so the main, the, the main two problems that men come to me with are erectile difficulties and premature ejaculation. And the main um, thing for women probably is painful sex uh, and not being able to orgasm. Mm -hmm. And then everybody comes to me because they have different desire levels in their relationships mm -hmm. and they really struggle with that and there's a lot of blame and a lot of guilt and all stuff that goes with that. They're sort of the main... And they're, they sound uh, kind of healthy enough in a way, in a sense that... Um, is, just say with, say with erectile dysfunction. Yeah. I've always thought like that there's a time when the body starts to slow down naturally. Mm -hmm. And if your body is kind of telling you, do you know what? The horn isn't that important anymore. <laughs> Blow something else. Well, well, maybe it's time to, do, to, to, to kind of redirect that energy into into something else and not to, for, for men who do experience that, mm -hmm. you know, for them not to think there's something wrong with them. Well, that's for, really for, important. Not to think yeah. you're supposed to be, you kind of, you know, rock solid till you're 90. Uh, <laughs> that if, if your body is saying to you in your, whenever in your mid to late 50s or whatever, whenever it starts, do you know, do you know slow down, dude. Let's, um, let's read some poems and go for a walk. <laughs> you know, so would, would part of your, is there a natural slowing down? There is a natural slowing down, but you see, because we're so um, focused on the penis and erections, we think that sex has to end because erections aren't working so well. But well, first of all, there's loads you can do without an erect penis, including men can orgasm without an erect penis, but they don't know that, so they just think they have to give up on their pleasure. Um, and women certainly don't need erect penises to have a great time sexually, as we 
as far as I know, anyway. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so, so there's a lot we can do, but because of, of because we've no education, and a lot of us, any education we have or or think we have is is porn related or romantic comedy related, we think that everything has to be about penetrative sex. But it doesn't. And if we think of it um, instead of a three course meal where, you know, but a foreplay is your starter and then the penetration is your main course. And then if you're lucky, you might get a, a cuddle or a coffee, you know. Yeah. Um, if you think of it more Depends as a... what time it is. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, <laughs> so um, I like to think of it more as a table of tapas. And so the, the penetration is just one dish. It might be your favourite, yeah. but if you go to a tapas bar and your favourite tapa isn't on, on that night, you don't leave hungry, do you? You have something else. So, OK, we say for... Um, I'm, sure, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure there are uh, lots of men out there with, with... And we'll move on to the women soon enough now, but just... just oh, sure. Just, um, <laughs> which is... is uh, anyway, um, so... <laughs> the... So if you... Say if, if a man can't get an erection. You know, just some fictional bloke that I happen to be thinking about. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> then I think, I think it is, in, is in, a, in a sense, it is a kind of uh, release because what it, it says to you is, okay, it's not gonna happen for you right now, Mr. Man, but you can so please this woman that you're with and it almost becomes, it's to, it now, it's all about you. Let me, in whatever way I can, please you sexually. And that's a great approach. Take the pressure off the bloke, because there's nothing worse than worrying about the horn and <laughs> as soon as you get in panic, let's do something with it quick before it goes again. Yeah. You're spot on. You're spot on. That can lead to premature oh, ejaculation, it's, it's, in fact. I, I've yeah. heard it's bad, all right. Now, so... <laughs> now, <laughs> but what I don't understand, in the name of God. But she said it, that you can, you can orgasm without getting an erection for a bloke. Why would you want to? Oh, no, but you have to... No, 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 no. Because orgasm and ejaculation happen at the same time, but they're two separate things. All right. So you don't have to ejaculate if that would upset you. I mean, your friend. I mean, you, you don't have to... Yeah. Tell your friend... I just... <laughs> tell your friend... I just wouldn't see the point in it. Do you know? Well, there isn't a point in it. It's flaccid. Yeah. yeah. Ba -dum, ba -dum. <laughs> Hi. Um, so, so, so that for men is... Orgasms. So, like, what, what would be... You know, yeah, so you can orgasm without having an erection. And until you've tried it, I really wouldn't knock it. But it also means if you learn that skill, you can have several orgasms in a sexual encounter, just like a woman may be able to do. Right, okay. So you could, they're dry orgasms. So you can have... If you... A, a different person could have an erection and have you know, a couple of dry orgasms before he ejaculates. Just going to clear in his throat. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> You're very confused. That's not how it works at all. <laughs> Maybe um, you don't have problems <laughs> with your erections. Um, Try a lozenge. And in for, for women, then, they present mainly with uh, painful sex. It can be, yeah. That okay. can be a, a big problem for them, yeah. Um, so women... Um, we, are, we are not taught, but we kind of somehow um, learn that our first time is going to be really painful. Yeah. And everybody's first experience is very different. But it doesn't... It, that's, that's a myth. That's just because we didn't know what to do to make sure. it not painful. Okay. Okay. So, if, so I would work with... A lot of um, young women come to me who have, been to, have not been helped and they've gone to a number of other people. I'm often the last port of call. Um, and they have stopped having sex completely. This, in their mid-20s. Mm -hmm. um, they've given up because they've gone to all these different specialists who have, have, have said they can't help them. And, it, and then you just trace back to their first time. They didn't know what they were doing, as most people don't. Yeah. They didn't know that they should be lubricated. They've had very painful first experience. And then they just keep having that experience. It only takes about... Th th everyone's different, but yeah. for the people who have trouble, it may only take two or three or, or maybe four experiences of pain for them to develop a pain pattern and a pain expectation. And the muscles at the entrance to the vagina start to close to protect them. It's a, yeah. you know, it's not a bad thing that it's happening, but the reason is lack of education. So if they can work back and learn how to relax, and they've got all the tension and then sure. they've got all the expectation, then it is a real problem. 
but if you can work back with them to a point where they are able to relax and learn that there, there's nothing wrong with their body, they just didn't know what to do with it, they can have really great results. So that's with a younger woman. Sure. With older women, then, it's often to do with perimenopause or menopause. And again, it's often, often around lubrication and, and women not understanding that they need help with that okay. as their oestrogen drops. Um, they stop lubricating. It's quite a natural thing. Okay. Just to go back to the men. Yes. You know, for, for men, <laughs> as they get older, they often don't realise that they need a lot more physical stimulation on their penis to get the blood flowing. Sometimes there's nothing wrong with their penises. They're just not getting enough, enough at attention <laughs> there. They expect it to just be hands-free like it was in their 20s. But you have to go down and... Um... It's a two-hand job, at least. <laughs> <laughs> um, do, you think as, do you think as a culture... We place too much importance on sex. There's an interesting thing, I don't know how true this is, but I, I heard in, in, that in a relationship, really good sex takes up about 30% of the couple's time, and really bad whoa, sex... Whoa, or, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. Headspace, sorry. That's, he oh, that, headspace, That's sorry. Monday, Tuesday, and most of Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> There's women out there going, oh, Jesus, I've had enough on my plate now with that. Um, so it takes up 30% of... Of their headspace, of their, 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 you know... And bad sex or no sex takes up 70% of their headspace. OK. So I think it's pretty important. I, haven't, I can't tell you where I got that from or if it's true, but it, it, it kind of rings a bit true that people really, really worry about their, their sexual life. It's a really important part of connecting and feeling connected and feeling loved and, and feeling attractive and, um, and enjoying yourself and expressing yourself. Yeah. And it's natural. It's not something we've made up, you and know? It, it's uh, something we're, that's good for us. We're, we're, you know, it's, we're meant to be doing it. I suppose for a lot of people as well, it's a, it's a time issue. You know, uh, often for couples, you know, the only time that sex presents itself or the opportunity to have sex happens is often, it could be nearly 11 o'clock, you know? <laughs> I do. And you're wrecked and you, you know, <coughs> perhaps you're both thinking, let's just do this quick and, <laughs> and, yeah. and go to sleep, yeah. you know. So uh, that would present its difficulties as well, which is why a weekend away in Limerick is always a great idea for a couple. <laughs> 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 and you have a, a, a ride sa Saturday morning and take your time, you know. Um, which is, which is which, as long as you have the weekends. I mean, yeah. I, I, think, I think you're right. I think we... You know, we do, even people who have really, who really enjoy sex and really fancy each other who are in couples, um, find themselves, find that sex gets pushed further and further down the list of priorities. Um, and it really troubles them. It's not like, uh, you know, it's not like that isn't missed. Um, it, it doesn't work so well, all the, the devices and, and making ourselves busy. We're really proud of being busy all the time, yeah, aren't yeah. we? It's like, oh, can, you know, everything's about busy. Um, there's never, we never sort of go anymore, oh, yeah, I don't know, I might do nothing, you know. Yeah. Or maybe we'll go to bed for the afternoon. That, you have, it's just rarely hear that anymore. So um, it is a real problem. Yeah. And younger and younger couples are, are really struggling because of, of not having enough time. Well, long, long, long may the riding continue, I suppose. I agree with yeah, you. Long may the, ladies agree. and gentlemen, Emily Powersmith. <laughs>